and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating exactly what you see on screen. This is a holiday postcard, so you have plenty of time to create it and mail it off. So we are creating the exact outcome that you see. I'm gonna walk you through some really easy steps to make a complex looking design, uh, working with vector elements like you see, um, really, really quickly and kind of streamline it. So it actually takes probably half the time that you um, might assume that it does. So for this, uh, I'm going to be using the free holiday vector pack um, from over on my blog. I gave this away a few weeks ago. It's totally free. So go and pick that up and you can create this exact outcome with me. So the vectors are free. This font that I'm using is my brand new font that just came out today. It's called Espresso Roast and I would love it if you went and checked it out. I'll leave a link on screen and a link in the video description. So we're just gonna hop right in. I've got my colors over here and I will give you the exact color build so you can use exactly what I'm using. And then at the end, we'll just, make this entirely print ready. So you'll have a PDF that you can print out. You've got your trim marks already there, so you can trim it down. You won't have any weird edges um, because we're utilizing a bleed. And then we'll be all set. So I'm gonna hop into Illustrator and we're gonna create a new document, file new. And this is the intention of printing at home. So we're gonna keep this in CMYK down here for our color mode. Make sure your raster effects are set at 300 ppi which is the print standard resolution and the size of this postcard is going to be seven inches wide by five inches high and this will fit in any a7 sized envelope and here's where the bleed is so just make sure you input 0.125 which is an eighth of an inch uh, which is also the standard bleed size so when you have all of that hit okay and now we've got our brand new document i'm gonna go grab these colors and drop them in so we've got them all set and ready to go and actually let me grab this background color as well so you'll notice i do have my keystrokes on screen so if i leave anything out um, you can see i'm right on screen so this background color right here i'm going to zoom up so you get all these color builds um, so this is the background color here's the pink the tan the blue the forest green light green and dark green so we have all of those and i'm going to grab these vectors we're using a lot of them out of here um, and i'm going to keep my background color on its own layer so i don't accidentally move it around as i'm placing other objects on top of it so in my layers palette i'm just going to label this background color and lock it just by clicking right here and then down here i'm going to hit this little icon and create a new layer and i'm going to call this artwork so i can keep all of my artwork on the same layer and i'm going to paste in those vectors over to the side just so we have everything prepared um, we've got all of our elements handy so i like preparing everything ahead of time just keeping everything organized and then i can just start copying and pulling over as I work so I don't have to keep jumping between tabs. So a little bit of just housekeeping, I guess, while I work. Okay, so we're just gonna jump into creating the initial design. So for this design, you can see that what's over here is the same as what's over here, same with in the middle. Um, so we're just gonna create this first portion right here and then you'll see how everything kind of comes together after that if you caught last week's tutorial on creating your own custom holiday gift wrap then you already know about these little filler elements so i'm using them in very much the same way that we did in last week's tutorial so all these tutorials are kind of building on each other um, each week i've got a few more planned so definitely stay tuned for those so what we're going to do is we're going to take care of all of our large elements first and then we're going to start tucking in our smaller elements and it's really important to consider scale as you are starting to kind of tuck little elements um, into each other. So even though they're different, they look like they still belong together. So I like using a variety of scale, a variety of color, um, and then just kind of taking it from there. So I've got a nice kind of visual hierarchy and a lot of variety happening to entertain uh, the eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna hop back over here. So as you saw, I started with this guy and kept him kind of straight up and when so my little trick for um whenever i need to reflect something i can hit o on my keyboard and just click 
at the place I want the element to reflect from, and then I can just click and drag. And I usually hold shift, so it's a direct one. Otherwise, you can kind of rotate it around. But if you hold shift, it's a direct reflection. It's a nice little handy tip. I use that one all the time. All right, so this is the blue. I'm gonna make sure that my blues are always from my little color palette over here. And then I'm gonna grab this guy and he needs to be reflected. So I'll hit O, click and toggle this over and he's gonna be bigger than this guy. So this part seems pretty basic um, to start with. And I'm just going to keep tucking in elements as I go. So I'm gonna speed up the video. And once I get this portion completed, I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my first little cluster put together and this does take a little bit of time um, just figuring out what pieces fit best where and what scale. Um, so don't get too frustrated. This definitely does take a little bit of time to figure out. It will get quicker the more that you do it. Um, so just practice. So now that I've got my little cluster all together, I can group it. So I'm gonna hit Command G or Control G on a PC to group it so they always stick together. And I actually think it might be a little too large right now. So I'm just gonna reduce the scale slightly. Okay, so that's looking good. So now what we need to do is replicate it. So you can see I've got the same thing over here as I have over here, and then it's actually the same down here as well. So we're gonna get a lot of work accomplished very quickly after this part. So this was time consuming, this part is gonna make it all worth it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hold Alt, click, drag, and then hold Shift. So everything stays in line, and then release, and now I'm gonna reflect it, so I'm gonna hit O, click over here and drag it over. So now it's nice and reflected. And now I can just hold shift and drag it all the way over. So that's looking really good. And now I can take this, hold alt, click, drag, and then hold shift to keep it straight. Then I'm gonna hit O on my keyboard, click right here, and then click anywhere here and drag it around. And now it is perfectly aligned and I've got everything replicated and it's still feeling a little large to me. So I'm gonna reduce this down again, just slightly. So now I've got this cluster up here, which I'm gonna group these together and this cluster down here, which I'm gonna to group together and they're all in line. So that's looking really, really good. Um, so I'm gonna set my ruler. So I'm gonna hit Command R, Control R, just so I can drag a center point to make sure I'm staying centered the whole time. So since our document is seven inches wide, I need to go to the three and a half inch mark right here. So I know that's exactly in the center. So I need to move it just a little bit. Okay, so everything is perfectly centered now and you can turn off your guides by hitting Command semicolon or Control semicolon on a PC and then you can see everything exactly as it is. So um, you can get a preview as you're working. All right, so one other thing that I had on this one is a little dot right there. So I'm gonna drop that in really quick and it's just a little blue dot. And I'm just gonna do the same thing down here. It looks a little off center. Let me turn my guides back on. Oh, I guess it is centered. All right, so we are all good right there. So we got a lot of work done super fast. So the last thing that we need to do is just drop in these edges. So we're gonna do those the exact same way that we did this little cluster. So what I'm gonna do is just start filling out the rest of the pieces right here, and then I'm going to replicate it and bring it over here, and then that part will be done, and then all we have to do is set our text and then save it out for print. So I'm going to begin dropping different elements in, and I'll speed up the video, and then I'll be right back.
Okay, so we've got all of our extra pieces over here all put together. So what I'm gonna do is click and drag, and now I've got all of my elements selected. And if I just hold shift, I can click and deselect these groups right here. Whoops, my little circle got off. Let me fix that. All right, so I'm selecting everything and then holding shift, clicking on this group and then clicking on this group to deselect it. So now I just have, let me deselect these little circles. Um, now I just have what I just created. So I'm gonna group these together by hitting Command G or Control G on a PC. And now I'm going to copy these. So hold Alt, click, drag. While you're dragging, hold Shift. And now I've got a copy. And then I'm gonna hit O on my keyboard, click right here, and then click and drag to reflect it over that point. And now I'm just gonna toggle it until it fits snugly into the other side. So now it looks perfectly symmetrical on both sides and now is the perfect time to go in and if you want to change any colors like I think I'm going to change um, if I hit AM my keyboard I can select uh, elements separately even though they're part of a group so I'm just going to select a few of these little dots and then change their color um, just to add a little bit of randomness to everything and once you're happy with how everything looks um, all you have left to do is to drop in the text i'm going to remove these extra pieces over here so all of that's looking good and then i'm just going to type out my little saying love and cheer and i'm going to set this in my new font espresso roast and it comes in three different uh, fonts, so it's a font trio. There's caps, which is what this is, and then there's a script and a symbols version. So I'm going to use the script for this main headline. I'm just going to drag it out and I'm going to color it this darkest color right here. Toggle it down, make it nice and centered so it's the center of attention on this. And then I'm going to type out for a happy new year. And I'm gonna set this one in the caps version of the font. So they pair really nicely together. I'm just gonna reduce the size just slightly. So that looks really good. And now I can delete my little, um, those ones are locked. Let me unlock that. I'm gonna delete my color circles. And now everything looks great. So the last thing I need to do is just save it as an Illustrator file and then save it as a PDF file. So save your Illustrator file and then after you do that, you can go File, Save As, choose where you're gonna save it, Postcard, choose PDF down here for Format, click Save, and then when your dialog box shows up, you're gonna come over here where it says Marks and Bleeds and make sure Trim Marks is checked and make sure use document bleed settings is also checked. That part's really important. And then hit save PDF. And then you can open it up. And once it's open, you can see we've got our trim marks right here, exactly where we need them. So when you trim it, you've got a little extra wiggle room right here so you won't end up with any weird white space issues and you are all set. And then you can just put your message on the back of your postcard tuck it into an A7 size envelope and send it off. So that's how to create a holiday postcard in Illustrator that is totally print ready. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And I will leave the link to the font and the free holiday vector pack in the description of this video. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.